time now for the markets with Layton, though, and you say Pond Bank uh, prices are up some, and feed prices are less in the, in the catfish business? And of course the question, what's the longer term outlook for catfish and aquaculture? We will have some analysis in a moment from John Michael Riley coming up. Also ahead in the markets this week, a new crop purchased by China supports soybeans. OA Cleveland says that cotton may hang in the 81 to 89 cent range as optimism grows for beef demand in 2014. Wednesday morning, the USDA announced a market supporting sale of U.S. soybeans to China. The Chinese are buying two cargoes of new crop beans, in fact, cargoes that total together 120,000 metric tons. Analyst Virgil Robinson of Market to Market says the weather conditions over Midwest soybeans is dominating the U.S. futures market as the number of bushels of old crop beans on hand continues to shrink. The old crop supply thinks well documented. It's relatively tight. And there is obviously some concern about recent weather and its effect on yield, which I think was documented by the Pro Farmer Tour this week. You know, the, the wheat yield as well as the harvested acres, both those factors remain moving targets as they do in corn. Moving into the cotton market, analysts say the trade here has settled into a sideways pattern following the recent collapse of a big rally. Doan's reports recent crop progress reports are certainly not helping the price outlook. Meanwhile, Dr. O.A. Cleveland says that cotton prices have returned to what he terms their familiar trading range. Cleveland thinks that cotton will likely remain within the 81 to 89 cent range for some time. Well, the month of September that we're embarking upon is National Honey Month, so let's see if you can answer our related trivia question about this commodity. How fast does a honey bee fly? Is the answer 5 miles per hour, 10 miles per hour, 15 miles per hour, or up to 20 miles per hour? I'll tell you at the end of the markets. A second major meat packer in the United States is raising concerns about that cattle feed additive known as Zilmax. Cargill made its announcement this week. The company says that in one month it will stop buying cattle that have been fed the growth promotant. Cargill is calling for more research to answer recently raised questions about Zilmax. Tyson Foods announced a similar decision earlier in August. Merck, the maker of Zilmax, has already temporarily pulled the product off the market. Analysts looking at the beef sector continue to speak about a tighter supply of cattle in the United States, especially once we get into the new year. Analyst Sue Martin thinks both the feeder and fat cattle markets will likely enjoy better demand if key indicators don't change by then. I think we're going to see a demand for these feeders come into fall. So I look at the cattle market and we realize that at some point here, going beyond October, we'll probably have some pretty good numbers, I think, coming to market in October. But once we get past October, we're going to, as we go towards February and towards April, we're going to tighten our meat supply a little bit. And I think world demand is going to be good for it. And not, on, not to mention that if the economy is growing in the U.S., truly growing, and you have less people unemployed, and you have things percolating in Europe and over in China, demand for beef might be pretty darn good. As we reported here last week, pond bank prices for United States catfish in July were up from a year ago. Now, there are fewer water acres devoted to fish production in the U.S. now. Extension Ag economist John Michael Riley joined me for a few minutes Thursday morning to discuss the outlook for catfish. John Michael, what kind of trend are we seeing as far as pond bank prices for catfish? Well, they've, uh, after struggling a little bit, they, they moved higher in 2010 and 11, up above a dollar, which was, which was great for producers. And then uh, that kind of, they pushed back from demand at retailers, at restaurants. And so it, it fell back into those norms of in the 70 cent range. We've seen them come back up a little bit, uh, approach dollar at, at certain times, but, but definitely better than where we were at a year ago and even just a few months ago. And of course, as far as uh, the, the key input, as far as catfish production, those uh, feed ingredients, soybeans, corn, other items, that at least for a while was coming down, helping out some. That's correct. We, we during the middle of the summer, uh, we got a late start to our planting, which pushed prices higher than it looked like. Uh, uh, crops were looking good. Prices started moving lower. Uh, since then, there's been a few crop tours out through the Midwest and the Corn Belt. 
showing soybeans don't look quite as good as we had hoped. Corn still looks good, so it's it's uh, occasionally ro rode soybeans coattails higher, but here lately a little bit lower for corn. Soybeans continuing to move higher, which is definitely going to put some poor pressure on on soybean meal prices, which is a ma main ingredient for catfish feed. Well, it's no secret, certainly, that water acres, uh, the number of uh, acres devoted to catfish production, not only in Mississippi, but in the United States, much less than it was, say, uh, even five years ago. That's true, and that's really what led to that spike in catfish prices was the fact that supply just got contracted so much, and so produce, uh, you know, retailers were, were search scrambling to find product, and that led to higher prices. Since then, again, mentioned demand kind of got some pushback there, but for the most part, we're continuing to see a contraction in, in uh, water acres and thus supplies. And we don't expect that to to change as far as uh, those number of water acres anytime soon. Should and especially when you look at uh, the fact that last year's feed prices were so high and that's still those those catfish are still in the water. And this foreign competition question that is still the hurdle that uh, everybody's looking for an answer to. It's, it's an important one and one that uh, we will continue to follow. I think that uh, there, there's some movement there but not like what the industry would like to see. Before our new feature story, let's check the trivia answer for this week. And the correct choice is C. Scientists say a honeybee can fly about 15 miles per hour. <laughs> 